All right, check it out. Not in the most ideal location to film this, but I've been trying to get this done for so long and I've got other stuff to do. So check it out. Now, some of you are gonna hate this. It's super unorthodox and it's super weird, but I thought it was kind of a somewhat of a clever idea to mount my bike rack to the roof rack and then use some uh, volet straps. These are Dekine version volet straps. And boom, you got yourself a freaking bike rack on the back of your truck. So not, I don't know, it's a little bit weird. I mean, but it's a pain in the ass to get your bike, get up on the roof to get your bike as it is when you have a truck this high. But uh, I've just been using this thing mounted up on the front and you know, I, I have the uh, kayak on the one side and the mountain bike on the other side. And uh, I don't know if you've ever ran into anything when your bike is mounted to the roof of your car, but I did have that happen to this seat on this bike once. So that's kind of a benefit is that it's a lot more lower profile in case you forget, but it's weird. I know I got gotcha. you. Now let's talk about the ladder. Trying to, cause that's what I'm trying to do is wrap up this ladder video. It is a little bit of a struggle to get that thing up and down from there. It's kind of heavy and awkward, but not too bad. Now, this did used to be black. <laughs> it's faded in the sun, but uh, that's one thing that kind of sucks is that when it is mounted on here, you can't really lift up your hatch. So I do have a nice four place mountain bike rack that goes into the trailer hitch that can be adjusted to two bikes. So, you know, I'll use that in certain instances, but when it's just me by myself cruising somewhere far away, it's pretty nice to have a sweet bike rack on there. But something to keep in mind is yes, you gotta make it, you gotta mount it so that it doesn't interfere with the ladder when the bike isn't mounted, so we're golden there. Now, one factor is you're gonna have to remove your Toyota emblem. So that's a major bummer, but I'm sure you can just buy another one and just kind of mount it a little bit higher or whatever. And unfortunately, I don't have a, I mean, it kind of ruins the paint right there, so. Anyway, once again, this is not a nice truck. This is a Land Cruiser. It's an off-road rig, so it is what it is. Now, the ladder itself is super sturdy. You got yourself a cool little shelf here you can put things on, but uh, I think I'm gonna put some grip tape, some thick grip tape, the same type that I put on here. That's just thick-ass skateboard longboard grip tape. You can get the same stuff at uh, Home Depot for steps and whatnot, but I'm probably gonna put a little bit on there just to kind of prevent the paint from wearing off, but it's pretty sturdy. It can definitely handle you climbing up on it without a problem. Ugh. And I mean, that's the big perk, right? Is no longer having to try to find your way up there. Just climbing up on there is a total pain in the ass, but when you have the rear hatch open, You've got an even nicer place to stand on to begin with. But anyway, it's pretty sturdy. It doesn't feel like it's going to flex a whole lot. But this, this model apparently is designed for the, the uh, later model trucks or something. Because I did have to cut and weld and modify that whole bracket. But as long as you've got a four and a half inch grinder and a welder and some spray paint, it's not that bad of a deal. Now... Talking about how it mounts up top here. I had mentioned how since my wing flew off, I just took the brackets off and uh, I've had my stainless steel bolts in there. Well, this one I had to remove that bolt and then put the plug in, the, those plugs come in the kit. Now, this upper part is kind of weird because it's just using a lot of the, the sticky mount tape. So I clamped that one down, I bolted that one down pretty pretty tight but I didn't want to clamp that one down too much because oh, there's some NICs I stuck in there because because as you tighten it it begins to uh, pull up on the sticky mount stuff so not ideal but it's pretty de pretty decent design the way they've got it figured out so that you can clamp it on to the top and the bottom with the sticky tape and 
how the bolts go in. So let's look at the top first. Now I ran that one a little bit close to the hinge there. And so be mindful of that. I probably should have had it over. I think it's touching above the hinge or something. So you can, you've got a little bit of flexibility on how far to the left and right you can move it. Not, not a whole lot, but a little bit. So right now it's kind of giving some resistance on that, which kind of sucks. So that makes us so have to push the damn thing up again. Kind of lame. Um, but that's how the inside mounts is just the two bolts. Use Loctite to keep those locked in place. And now talking about the lower mounts, you can see how I didn't quite get it totally square. So the one bolt sticks out a bit longer than the other one, but it's pretty, pretty decent design. You've got your, I guess is that, it's whatever, it's a steel little, steel little tab right there that kind of is sticky mounted to the bottom lip. And then you can see the clamping action right in there. Now, it's kind of hard to tell, but this does have something of a curve, a curvature to it to conform to the shape of the hatch. So that right there would probably be the biggest challenge if you were gonna try to build one of these yourself is how to, you know, make a curve like that. But that's how it's mounted, that's how it bolts on. Oh, sadly, also I had to cut the L off of my Land Cruiser. How freaking dumb is that? So those are a couple factors that are, you're gonna have to modify your emblems. You gotta get your wing off. You gotta have your, you know, your bolts changed out, et cetera, et cetera. But pretty stoked with it. It's decent. These Gobi racks are becoming more and more popular. I'm seeing them all over the Forerunners and all the other rigs and uh, the FJs and all that. And they generally go because of the full hatch. It goes from the top all the way to the bottom which I don't really like a whole lot. So the fact that this is just kind of halfway to go onto your hatch is pretty cool, pretty decent. So there's my review of it. I'm happy I got it. Just be mindful of which version you get because they might not fit your truck. They're specific, year specific. So I got a sweet deal on this, half cost. So a little bit of welding, no problem. Anyway, we'll see you on the next one. Easy peasy. And uh, if you've never seen Vole Straps, it's a company, it's a little ski company here, based here in Utah, V-O-I-L-E, Vole. They make all sorts of ski equipment, but they're the ones that kind of pioneered these, these types of straps. If you've never seen them, this is one of the brands that you can get, but super easy, super sweet. They work for everything. You can get big ones, little ones. You can get different brand ones. I think there's another brand called Titan. And uh, so anyway, they're super handy. Can make all sorts of shit out of it but the only concern is the up and down bouncing but so you know taking this bastard up and down trails over moab might not be the best freaking idea but to get to get you to and from the trail it shouldn't be too hard too big a deal a couple last things i forgot to mention is that those bolts 
have been in for so long that it was damn near impossible to get that one out. The nut plate inside just kept spinning. That's why it's all chowdered up there and it looks pretty freaking ugly, but be mindful of that. And secondly, um, that this side of the, the base plate, I took to the vise and tweaked it a fair amount, bent it so that it would kind of come down and wrap around a little bit and touch the top of the hatch. Otherwise it was just straight flat and it really wouldn't have touched the sticky mount. You know, it would have been trying to pull itself off the whole time. So those are the only two last little things to mention.